Yeah. The Portland Trail Blazers are trading Drew Holiday to the Boston Celtics for Robert Williams, Malcolm Brogdon, 2024 Golden State Warriors first round pick and another first round pick. I don't remember. I just read it. Listen, guys, it, I mean, <laughs> Drew Holiday, Portland wanting to get rid of Drew Holiday as quickly as possible was really the only, the last possible way the Sixers could reroute James Harden to the Clippers. But once I really started to look at it and started to look at, you know, what Portland probably wanted for Drew Holiday and what other teams would be able to offer, I said it. I said the Sixers are probably like fifth on that list, if that. So now you have a player who's still publicly bashing the president. Said he's not playing for him. Said he's not coming back. He's the only true point guard on the roster. So not only are you down a point guard, you've gotten nothing in return for, for Harden. Obviously, he's still here. The Sixers, this Sixers offseason, we have added Kelly Oubre Jr. We didn't have enough to get out of the second round last season with James Harden playing. And this offseason netted us minus a point guard, and we added Kelly Oubre Jr. Uh, I mean, you know, don't forget that we added one-legged Danny Green and one-legged Montrez Harrell and uh, Mo Bamba for no real reason. Uh don't forget, you know, we traded Matisse Thibel for Jalen McDaniels, who walked in free agency. Uh, on top of that, the Milwaukee Bucks add Damian Lillard. <laughs> and the Boston Celtics add Drew Holiday. Holy shit. Could this offseason be any worse for Daryl Morey? I mean, this is career-defining stuff. This is the worst offseason Daryl Morey has ever had in his career as a, a front office executive. It's it, this is a, this is insane. This is absolutely a disaster. Uh, hiring Daryl Morey has been an absolute disaster. He sat too long on the Ben Simmons situation. Now he's now he fails to move James Harden while teams around him get significantly better. I mean, I mean, tell me besides drafting Tyrese Maxey, tell me, please tell me what Daryl Morey has done to improve any of these situations. The Sixers have now been in purgatory for what for, for at least three seasons. We've been on the end of the process now for three seasons. Uh, I mean, it's just, you know, it's bad. It's bad, guys. It's bad. I don't understand how anybody could be excited for this Sixers NBA season. I don't understand how anybody could be excited for this. This is embarrassing. This this, this team is, is right now an embarrassment to the best sports city in the world. An embarrassment. I don't know a single person that's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hyped for Sixers season, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. Blow it up, dude. Blow it up. It's over. And with the rumor that I put out two days ago of Joel Embiid and his camp are putting pressure on the Sixers front office to improve the roster before the season starts. Listen, realistically, there's no there's no moves, dude. There's no moves. There's no moves. That summer when the Sixers blew their damn load and shot 
paws, all of their first round picks elsewhere to, to try to build a super team in, you know, Jimmy Butler, Tobias Harris, on and on and on. Then, you know, I mean, they, they, it's, it, that was in 2000, that was the summer of 2018. Five years later, it is haunting this franchise. This is why management matters in sports. The moves that you make right now will either help you or put you in a hole that will take you 10 years to climb out of. You can't just go out here and say, oh, let's trade all of our first round picks and all of Sam Hinkie's assets to stuff together a bunch of fringe all-stars and see if it works. Who cares what happens five years from now? Here you are. The moves that you make right now either help you or put you in a hole that will take you 10 years to climb out of. It just keeps getting worse for the Sixers. There's no move to be made. There's no assets. There's no draft picks to trade. There's players on bad contracts. We still have Tobias Harris. Can you guys believe we still have Tobias Harris? My God, they've been trying to trade this guy. Every year of that five years contract, they've been trying to trade this guy. We this is a, this is an insanely laughable mangled together roster, right? It, it's unbelievable. And training camp starts fucking tomorrow. You went from, you know, possibly having a contending roster, right? Like the past couple of years, it's been, well, the Sixers are in the conversation, right? The Bucks, the Celtics, and the Sixers are in the conversation. And over the course of the past couple of seasons, as you as you lost in the second round and went into the offseason, you didn't improve. And then you lost in the second round, went into the offseason, yeah, you didn't improve. And then this season, you lose in the second round, go into the offseason, and you get significantly worse while everybody around you gets better. I don't know how Joel Embiid could be happy right now. I don't know how Nick Nurse could be happy right now. Nick Nurse might be like, holy hell. I signed I signed the contract to be the Sixers' new head coach. Right around the same time, James Harden and the, and the front office uh, uh, announced that they were going to facilitate a trade. Me, Nick Nurse, I was assuming James Harden was going to get traded. Daryl Morey told me, hey, don't worry about the roster, what it looks like in July. Don't worry about what the roster looks like in July. So I sign on as the head coach and the roster in July. The roster in October when the damn season's about to start is basically the same, except for Kelly Oubre Jr. and a couple of ancient players with torn ACLs. Wow. 